Hello, welcome to Windshine Audio channel. I'm Elvin, owner of Windshine Audio. I notice a lot of you are pretty interested in what is inside a DAC, especially the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus. Why is it weight 22 kg? Why is it size like a full size component? Measure about 42 and 38 cm for a deck. I have a Terminator Plus with me today, so I thought of showing you what is inside, what is really inside this Terminator Plus DAC. Let's zoom in. I already have the top cover open, and you can see from this angle here the digital processing and R to R board and the R to R module. And you don't see a power supply here. Where's the transformer? Right, the transformer is underneath, hidden behind this main board. There's a the two power transformer, a pretty huge one, encapsulated in a metal box, hidden underneath the main board. The two transformer, one rated at 80 VA. The other one rated at 250 VA. It's a pretty big transformer for a DSC application. I know some of the integrated M on the market doesn't even have the size of the transformer compared to the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus. Not only that, there's a metal sheet in between the module here, in between the module and the power supply box. The metal sheet is a pretty thick one that if further isolate or further shield the possible noise that is generated by the transformer not to interfere with the main digital processing here, the sensitive application here. Dynaflips go through the trouble to make the power supply right. Reason being is Dynaflips knows that the quality of the power supply make a huge difference in sound quality. The true transformer oversize is really to do the job of linear power supply and supply sufficient or a lot of headroom DC power supply to the DAC. Right, enough of power supply. So, okay, power supply contribute to the weight. The casing of the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus also contribute to the, to the heavy weight. It is made of thick aluminum, front panel, left, left right panel, and the top cover, of course I already have it open, and the back panel. All these are full aluminum, so it weighs a lot. And shipping of this guy is a nightmare, but we'll deliver to you. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, I already have the top cover open, and then let me show you what's inside this flagship Terminator Plus DAC. On the left side here is the digital signal processing module. On the right side here is the R to R ladder module. And you notice there's a small little board here. It is an OCXO module that is linked between the digital signal processing as well as the R to R ladder. So there's no, no interlink between the DSP and the R to R. You notice there's a line here. It is essentially a, a physical barrier of the DSP module and the R to R ladder. The only linkage between the two is via this OCXO module. Another distinctive feature of Dynaflips, you notice there's a bunch of capacitor here. Dynaflips believe in using multiple small capacitor. Reason being is multiple small capacitor will have lower EXR effect. It is better than a big capacitor for that matter. And Dynaflips believe in this. And you notice all of the Dynaflips product come with multiple small capacitor for DC or linear power supply or regulator. Right, let's zoom in into the DSP. This is the DSP. Digital signal are coming from the connector here, and there are a few chips here. So I'll talk about the USB chip first. There's a USB receiver and a SDM MCU microprocessor. It is not a simple or uh, off-the-shelf um, USB receiver that is found on market. It is a proprietary solution. In my opinion, Dynaflips has one of the best USB receiver on the market. Uh, this is not coming from me. A lot of our customers think that or feel that the USB receiver or USB input of the Dynaflips DAC sounds pretty good. There's a little FPGA here. FPGA is a few programmable gate array that it does the digital to signal digital signal processing. So all the digital input signal here goes through this FPGA. The one of the Important role of this FPGA is to do FIFO buffer and reclocking. This is important. FIFO buffer and reclocking essentially reduce the digital input signal jitter to the lowest possible point. And if you if you notice, if you have um, 
less than ideal digital signal that is going through Dynaflip's DAC, the sound quality is pretty acceptable after the DA conversion. Reason being is the FIFO buffer and reclocking technology adopted by Dynaflip's has excellent rejection to jitter. So the jitter in a digital signal will, will sound bad if the jitter is not reduced. So this FIFO buffer and reclocking with the help of the OCXO essentially reduce the jitter to to negligible level so the digital signal coming through this Dynaflip's DAC will likely sound better than I would say the rest of the DAC on the market but don't quote me <laughs> right so the OCX hole here are oven control crystal oscillator it runs pretty hot it maintained at a certain frequency a certain temperature and throughout the operation, so the upper frequency of the 45 MHz and the 49 MHz remain pretty constant throughout the operation. So it, the oven heat up by the high current power supply here, and the high current power supply has a constant current to keep the OCXO at a fixed temperature. So to guarantee the output frequency of the crystal, 45 MHz and 49 MHz, remain pretty stable throughout the operation. This is very important as well. We know that in digital product, be it a DAC or ADC, the clock quality plays a big part. So Dynaflips knows this and you notice in the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus, Dynaflips uses OCXO. So what are the differences between the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus? I'll talk about it later. Okay, so we, we talk about the digital signal, we also talk about the OCXO module, and let us talk about the R2R module. So you notice there are four banks of resistor ladder here. Uh, Dynaflip's DAC are true balance, so uh, the two modules here essentially handle the left channel positive and negative R2R conversion. The other two modules here handle the R left right channel positive and negative um, R2R conversion. So true balance, the signal of the XLR is true balance, so we always recommend the customer to use XLR connection whenever possible. You notice there are a series of capacitor and some IC here, 8, eight pin XOIC. So these are not op amp, these are not um, output stage. These are the power regulator for the R2R circuitry. Resistor ladder or R2R deck, deck for that matter is pretty sensitive to the quality of the power supply. So all these are really the power supply to supply a higher quality or better quality or more precise DC voltage to the resistor ladder to, to have a higher resolution or higher quality output. So Dynaflip believe in R2R raw output instead of having an output stage. So there's no OM, there's no discrete output stage for all the Dynaflip's DAC. Reason being is uh, Dynaflip believe in lesser signal, lesser component in the signal path can guarantee a higher sound quality, a, a better sound quality. There are some truth in it. Um, you may argue that direct R2R deck raw output may have higher impedance compared to the rest of the DAC on the market. Yes, it is. The output impedance of the XLR is about 1250 ohm. The RCA impedance, output impedance is about 650 ohm. It is a little bit higher compared to the rest of the DAC on the market, yes. But uh, Dynaflips actually tune the R2R ladder with a higher current output so that it can drive most of the input stage of the amplifier on the market. So we do not have a pairing problem with um, of Dynaflips DAC and vast majority of the amplifier on the market. Right, so I talk about the digital board, OCSO module, R2R ladder module, and I'll try to show you how to pop this guy out and you can see the clear segregation between the digital board and the r 2 module. I have some tool here. So as I remove the as I remove the board, I hope it don't drop out. This is my this is the first time I'm doing this in a video. So if it did drop out, please do not laugh. <laughs> I already have most of the screw removed, so I'll just need to remove two screws to show you how to to show you this uh, OCXO module. Right, I'm backhanded. Okay, let's remove the OCXO. Here we go. Right, this is the OCXO module. 
There are two crystals inside, 45 MHz and 49 MHz. And you notice there are some other components. Let, let me have a pointer, a teaser. These two small little chips here are high-speed optocoupler. It isolates the digital noise from the digital signal module to the R2R module. So it blocks most of the digital noise so that um, there's no noise pass through from the left side, the left input side to the right R2R module output side. So it plays an important role to, to galvanic isolate the noise from, of the digital signal and um, not to contaminate the R2R module. And this is the board. And we can see a clear segregation between the digital signal processing module and the R2R module. So it comprises of two separate boards, one module here and the other module here. So what are the differences between the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus? First thing, the quality of the OCXO. The quality of the OCXO in the Terminator Plus is of higher quality. Second, the matching of the R2R resistor ladder is of higher quality for Terminator Plus. And the third difference, the front panel. The Terminator Plus comes with a curvy panel with a little bit of design. You may like it or you may not like it or you prefer the Terminator 2. This, this is personal preference. But I felt the Terminator Plus design is a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, it's not just flat panel like the Terminator 2. So these three are the differences between the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus. Quality of the OCXO, higher precision R2R ladder, and the curvy front panel. So I think I talked more most of the stuff of the Terminator Plus already, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Do subscribe to the channel and uh, hit on the bell button so that you get notification of um, whenever I upload a new video. I hope you enjoyed this. See you next time. Thank you.